Right, I, I did a painting last Friday, uh, oil painting. I haven't done oils for a long time. And it seems to be getting quite a bit of interest and some comments. And I used two colours. I used uh, Viridian and Light Red. And I found it quite uh, difficult to get a, a dark. So I'm going back to what I used to use in a lot of Venice paintings I did for a dark colour made from Viridian and Alizarin Crimson. So just Winton, the student quality, Winton and Newton. Um, they're the oil equivalents of the watercolours we've been using, Cotsman. They're, they're good, these are quite saturated, but the green is not quite so saturated as, as the, uh, the red. And the light red that I used last Friday is, is, is very, very strong, even though it's a student quality. But they're, they're pretty good, good, good paints. Load of linseed oil, I'm waiting for some online. I ordered, it's quite expensive to buy a quantity and we're using a lot of linseed oil in this type of picture. And I, I got the idea, if you've watched the pre previous one, from Dennis Sheehan, uh, an oil painter, American. Very, very good, very slick. And he paints in this way as a demonstration of how the old masters used to used to paint. And. Uh, and it's, it's, it's called oiling, oiling out. You put your painting on and then you take out, lift out the light, the light areas with a cloth or paper in our case. So there's my board. I'll just zoom it in a little bit uh, so I can see my screen. Well, that'll do. Um, it's a piece of hard board, it's not canvas, which I primed. I rubbed it down with very rough sandpaper first, very coarse. And I went over it with an acrylic artist quality white uh, primer, well, uh, white paint. And that, that's, that's fine, it's got a bit of tooth to it. And we'll see how we go. Now, his idea was to start off without an idea, but we've all got ideas in our heads, heads from paintings that we've done over the years. Pot, pot, pot spoilers, we call them. Uh, but I, I just loved his approach, and I'm going to try and do another one here. Uh, I got halfway through the other one and I almost lost the will to live. I thought it's not really going anywhere, but all of a sudden it started to come and I got an idea from it and I developed it and I was quite pleased with the finished results. So I'll uh, dip my, my two inch brush that I just happen to have into some linseed oil and into the paint here and just, oh that's much darker, just dob it around. Loads of paint. And just, just see, see what what happens, what what appears on the on, on the board. I, I like to have water in my compositions because it shows reflections. And just by putting a reflection, it just says that this is water. No, this is it isn't any darker than what I was using. Now this brush is using has it's only been used twice or the second time. I'll lift those off as I go. Because this takes a couple of days to dry so we're okay. And whatever you put on you can take it out. But a nice bit of red in it's gotta be a sky. I'm only going to do landscapes with this eye, that's all I do. Trees and skies. All I ever wanted to do, trees and skies. Occasionally I put a building in just to, as an interest in the landscape. As, it, as this does tend to get tacky, it takes more paint. But I uh, can't see anything yet, but we'll, uh, we'll just muck about with it for, for a few minutes and see see which way it's going to go. Um, I might even put a building in, I'll use another brush for that. I need a bit more oil because we're going to use loads of this. I'm waiting for a delivery of a larger bottle of oil. Because I, I find this quite exciting having a go at this sort of thing. But it's a bit hit and miss to start with as you can see. Oh, let's do this. See, once again, there's a tree appearing in the, or a, 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 a lump of something appearing in there, but I don't want to do the same as I did last Friday. 
So we'll just put some trees in other places. I just love love trees. <coughs> uh, I sort of have a bit of a river coming along across here, stream. A bit of bit of foreground here, maybe. Coming across here. Whoops, look at that. The trouble with your brushes, they do shed a lot of hairs. Low horizon maybe. Let's get a bit of kitchen towel and just see what we can... Alizarin is not a, it doesn't seem to be a very saturating colour. Over, over there. Balance that side, maybe. Mm. Something going on. Don't know what yet, but. I do uh, paint a lot of my local river called the River Wandle. It was badly polluted in the 19th century with loads of mills on it. I think it was the heaviest used river in, in Europe at the time, in the Industrial Revolution. And it's a very, very uh, interesting history. And we go to, on our bikes, to a place called Merton Abbey, which uh, has a mill, it's a, a working mill, it's in a pottery. And um, well, the, the mill, it, it, they, 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 they do use the power from the water to drive the generators, and it, it powers the pottery. And it, they did a television program on it a while ago, Time Team, with Tony Robinson, and they dug the foundations of, next to the mill and found that it was used by Liberties, the world famous department store. And they used it as a print works for printing um, silk. And, it wasn't a big building, but then in the 18th century, 19th, they had the real big factories on the river. It's not a big river. It's described as a, a Surrey chalk stream, but uh, let's, let's load up some sky here. Whatever you put on, you can always take off. Um, so we'll maybe just put a
got some texture on out of this here. We need a bit of bit of, bit of light sky. Maybe. Just cover the canvas, not the board, killing the canvas, as we say in the trade. Oops, must be a kitchen roll. That didn't have kitchen roll in medieval times. But a bit of a, a bit of a history lesson. Those of you who are familiar with David Hockney, he did a, a really brilliant television programme years ago on the BBC, uh, describing how the 15th century, 14th, 15th century painters suddenly went from naive perspective into the most phenomenal paintings of, of um, chandeliers, suits of armour. And he wanted to show that, that the invention of the camera obscura was about that time. And he said, if you study the swordsmen, they're all they are all wearing their swords on the on the opposite side. That you would imagine for people who are predominantly uh, right-handed, which proved that that they were projecting an image, but it was reversed as it would be. And he and you could date the time, or he could date the time precisely as to when they started to use a camera obscura. Uh, there's some interest. We can, see, we can always put, put, put it back. We're trying to see which way we can develop the shapes in this. But I'll use a bit of oil just to clean off some lighter towards the horizon. I might not like this, I might need to change it. Messy business. Um, this is just sort of a clump of trees on, no, on, on, on that, that bank, so I want to clean out some sky there. It's not true that, that, that we're working entirely from abstraction because we're not. We're, we're just trying to create an effect of something going on there. I'm going to waste all my wife's kitchen roll. Let's, uh, let's see if we can texture around here. We can always, if it doesn't work, we can always. This is just softening. Okay, it's a lovely, lovely effect, leaving dark areas. And you can always use your bit of towel to. Nice bit bigger. The towel to, to just create a a softness. My fingers cramping. I did I did a big carpet job this morning because that's what I do when I do it. Slowly running out of steam though. Been too old for it but now I don't if I put in two trees here, two clumps of trees, I don't want them to compete with each other. Or one dominant. Now we're looking more like a bit of a banks of a river. The river wonder maybe. It's not, I'm not copying anything, I'm just making up from experience what I've done many so I haven't done many of these, I've only done so the second one. I've tried but uh, but it's wonderful the, the effects you can get with two colours. It's, it's good to exercise. And in watercolour, see how far you can go with um, with just one or two colours, or the most three. It's a good experience, and you can sort out all your tones rather than using different colours. You can use. 
just the various intensities of tone with them and and it's great great to do it keeps things simple I'll take out some more I'll take out a lot of this just want to get some more paint on let's just put it on that there Let's go back into this bank here. Establish something, some dark areas, some real dark tones in there. Lots of oil. Dark shadow area. Push the brush as well as stroke it. You push it up, up. Get all sorts of grasses. There it is. Gonna get some some trunks in there. Some that will the same. I will. We'll make try to make them a bit different to each the one before. Otherwise, you've just got a rank of soldiers. I think I'm doing something I do in watercolour. Never mind, no matter. It's a demonstration. Uh, right, let's, uh, I want to lift out some of this here. So rather than using a new bit of tissue paper, I've got oil in there and I'll. Just lift it out. Of course, if this doesn't work out well, you'll never know, will you? Because I won't publish it. But I'm helping a friend out in the morning to move some more of her watercolours. It was her who got me painting on YouTube in the first place because I did this demonstration for her because she couldn't get over to me last winter and to send it out in an email because it was too big for the email. So we had to do it via YouTube and then send the link. And that started it all. And I really enjoy doing these demonstrations. I found them very, very involving, stimulating. Let's put in some painting with the, what's that? See how soft you can get these, the tops of the, the canopy some leaves showing through. Don't want to go too high on this one. If it does I can just lift, lift it up. But they look, well the last one, I, well the one I did on Friday looked quite exciting. But I can't keep doing the same one, I could have tried to do different things. I'll put some detail in there. Can lift out some some uh, trunks. I 
you've got to create an impression. You can't can't do anything uh, exact. This is too hit and miss for that. It's an impression. Atmosphere, mood. Yeah, look at that. That's interesting, isn't it? I'll darken some of this over the top of it, but I'm going to do the same here. Make, remember, when, you, when you're doing these uh, chunks, that they have to hold up a huge canopy of of leaves and twigs and branches and. And if you do them too flimsy, the, the two trees will topple over. They just couldn't possibly hold the weight that we painted above it. I know, just... Right, I'm going to try to use this bit of paper just to... No, it might be a bit of a brush. So a bit of oil. Oh, we just just put some of that back, and then I'll soften that again. Let's be coming across here. I might even put some light shining through. The, the sky holes. Remember that um, birds need to fly through the trees, through the leaves, so don't make them too solid. Scrape out the shapes of those trunks. Get that right coming across there. Right. A bit of steel wall still there. Right, just put some more. Let's uh, sort of that stand up for that and see. Ah! Oh, I didn't really want to do that. Looking a bit like a candy floss, that one. We'll send more to that. Get them all on one side, get the weight on one side. It's too, too rounded there. Bit of green. It's bigger than I really wanted it to. to So as I say, it's really messy, but maybe the, the linseed oil is quite good for your, your hands. I don't know. Right, let's have soften, soften that and I can reinstate my trunks. Let's get a pad.
Well, I'll try to just create a nice shape on the, around there. Because I don't want the left to match the right. Now let's uh, just put my pad. Soften, soften down those edges. to check it gets bigger and bigger. Right, well, let's uh, take out some trunks in there. That's all right. So light against dark all the time. Okay, the contrast. A few twigs up, branches up in the canopy there. It all seem to be leaning over one side, you know, it's just all sort of piles. Okay. That's a bit dark, right? so just pad that out a little bit. I don't want any too much detail on these. But I want the dark in the back here nearer to me than around the edge because that's where the light is going to be shining, shining through. And I'm, I try to create now an ethereal effect, but I, I, you need to build up a, a, a dark behind, right here. So I've lost, I've lost it. Uh, let's uh, do that again. Let's get then the dark in that shadow area here. Some stuff in here. Oops. Oh, the background there. Some distant uh, trees in the background. Well, it's uh, just diminish now, soften. Get the air back into it. We will be going back to watercolors shortly. Well, not today, you know. We're going to sit in an armchair after my large room. That's that's it. That's that's better day. Right, let's uh, scrape out some of this. Some of this here now. Drawing with a paper towel. Right, 
to put that bag back in there. Just soften that. Oh, yucky. But at least I'm not breathing in loads of uh, paraffin kerosene, which I use to clean my brushes as I go, and it, I breathe it in its horrible stuff rather than clean them off of the air. I haven't got a good painting technique, I must say. Right, well, it seems to be coming on, something seems to be happening there, doesn't it? Um, let's have a look at my camera, my little screen there. Right, okay, we'll, we'll go on to another area now. I'll try to get some dark in here. Though we we'll, we'll think about the sky, what sort of sky we're gonna gonna have. Okay. Uh, I want to draw very gently. I haven't really established a light source for this yet. So that'll be another challenge. We've got to sort out a we'll be back yet anyway. But, but I put a sort of a moon in the, the one I did Friday. See what happens when we when we start to soften around here. A nice pad. Now this alizarin is quite a different colour to to the intense red oxide or light red that I used last Friday, but. what happens. These, I think as I get more used to doing oil painting and this sort of using this technique I will get more elaborate and I'll, I'll add colours to it but at the moment I'm just doing doing this because it's it's an old technique but we're using it to complete a painting whereas the other way would be just to use this as a, an underpainting and build it up with more colours. But uh, but I, I, I'm quite excited by doing this. It's, it's a bit of a departure, but but it does you, it does you good to to try different things just to get your enthusiasm back. Yeah, I've done watercolours now solidly since last December. <coughs> <coughs> and I painted nothing of studio quality because I've been talking through them and doing the demonstrations. But I've really enjoyed doing that. Great, great exercise. And this is very interesting. I'll, I'll, I'm going to put this in a, in a, in a frame and I've got as far as I, I can go with it. I'm just showing a bit of, a bit of water there. Well, not water, but, but some, some movement. Get 
it's a nice light coming through there because that's no reflection there, that bit. Just other than the bit above. Take that out with a bit of oil, I think. Thomas cramps, but ah. Right, let's uh, see if I can get the reflection to these. More or less underneath where they're supposed to be, but if I forget them exact, you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. Get my thumbnail or something. Just no one. Some light to show, to show in here, in there. Just to show water's coming in there. See, the, these are taking a lot longer to do than watercolours, but I uh, hope they're worth the effort. Let's get that shape there a bit better. Right, that's. Uh, some grasses in here now. Let's, uh, no, I need some darker there. Oh. This is the bank. Dobbing down in here. Let's 
some more darks here. Now, I, I, to show the base of those trees on the left, I'm going to just lift out some Thing, is it? Let's just put some of that back there. <coughs> oh. I'm, I'm going to just clean up the sky a bit now. But if you're going to, if you're going to put a, a sun or something in, in, in that, you really need to have a lot of dark around it, otherwise it, it, it won't show, there'll be no contrast, so we won't put a sun in it at all maybe. Let's, let's, um, let's see if we can texture some leaves on those trees with some just paint, just a, it's a towel. Yeah, you don't need to be mechanical like that. Nah, that's a. Uh, put some of that on there. So. Tell me, is the time it takes to do this? Expecting you. You to sit through the whole demonstration is a bit, a bit of an ask, really. But uh, right, let's uh, let's start texturing that. Might be a bit of too much of a, a a contrast clash with the tree in the background. There. some hard edges on there. It might solve the contrast problem with the one behind, which is soft. I'll draw back to that. Oh, 
box back on there then. Right, that seems to almost separate it from what's behind. Well, I'll put this in a frame in a minute. It's going to look, I hope, fifty percent better. Before I do, I'm going to have to clean off the edges, otherwise it'll stick to my new frame, this newish frame. Just use a bit of this towel, I can create a lot of grass. That's a bit of fishing. There's no, there's no great thing to paint on this. I'll sign it and let's see what it looks like. It's right, wash my hands on my jumper, put it in the frame. There we go, we'll do this. Crash. I'm just going to clean off my 
position. Right, now we'll see what we've, what we've done, if anything. as good as the other one but uh, I don't reckon it's too bad. Slightly different. Right let's uh, zoom in. Okay got the focus. There's my rough reflections. My foreground with trees coming out of that bank. What I've done which I'm gonna have to change I've put like a regiment one two three I don't like that that's gonna have to Change, but don't have to change that. Uh, put the weight somewhere else. Uh, that's not too bad there. Let's just. Well, I'm not displeased with that. I think it's quite ex exciting. It's got something going for it. Uh, I've got some as excited as the other one, but if I just put in some... some lifting out here and there. But... But generally it's uh, good fun to do. I'll come out of that again now and we're going to have another last look at it. Well thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Bye bye.